next uh, presenter is uh, Luis uh, Trujillo, uh, sales manager at uh, Hogan Dorn America. Uh, the title of his talk is The Power of Data for Indoor uh, Strawberry Production. With uh, more than 25 years of experience in markets with strong focus in innovation and technology, it is no surprise uh, that Luis ended up in horticulture. Uh, he joined uh, Hogan Dorn in early uh, 2019. Uh, before that, he has been part of uh, high tech uh, solutions for indoor farming in various countries. Uh, the knowledge he gained during that period means that he understands and supports the importance of using technology in an indoor farm to achieve outstanding results. Uh, he now brings that knowledge into practice uh, within Hogan Dorn America. Uh, his daily job is to support growers and partners in choosing the best fitting automation solution for their business, whether it's a greenhouse or uh, indoor farm. Uh, welcome, Luis. Thank you very much, Fadi, for the presentation. Uh, we're going to start um, directly into the contents. It's about the power of data uh, for indoor strawberry growing. It's um, thank you very much for being here. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, this presentation is divided in four sections, four chapters. The first chapter is about a little bit the principles of plant empowerment. Uh, the second one is the challenge of growing strawberries indoor, uh, main aspects, let's say general aspects of that challenge. Then we will talk about the opportunity of applying those principles to the challenge. And the last but not the least, the future, how we see it and some aspects that we think are going to very soon. Let's start with the principles of plant empowerment. We're going to share you some aspects and basic principles that are being used for data-driven growing. It's all about plants. It's, the focus is on the plant, is uh, the plant point of departure. Uh, what does the plant need? Uh, what can we give to the plant? Uh, and actually the plant needs a balance, a balance of energy, irrigation, and assimilates. It's all about photosynthesis. The plants, that's how the plants eat. Uh, we need to optimize the photosynthesis process. Higher temperature increases the speed of the photosynthesis process. Open stomata is also uh, important in that process, as everybody knows. Uh, free balances, energy balance, water balance, and assimilates balance. That's basic principles of plant empowerment. They are all interlinked. They're not independent. So each, they have relation with you. It's all on the plant. Talk initially a bit about the energy balance. The energy balance is the balance of external energy sources. The input could be radiation, artificial lighting, heating, convection, water. The output could be the long wave heat radiation, convection to cold air, and evaporation. So we need to balance that input and output. Then we'll talk about the water balance. The balance of the input of water needs to be equal to the output, evaporation, and a little bit the growth of the plant. During the photosynthesis, the input and uptake of water need to be in balance in order to keep that stomata open. During the nighttime, it is important to keep a low evaporation rate to assure that the uptake of nutrients is sufficient. The plant needs to evaporate and take up water from the sown root zone for nutrients, growth, and cooling. Talk about the simulates balance. The simulates balance is kept between vegetative, that's leaf and stem, and generative, that's fruits, vegetables, power. To accomplish this, must be a good ratio between light and the average temperature. So, what is that good ratio between light and the average temperature? That's very important for plant empowerment. If we see the plant on top of the left, which is taller and slimmer because of the source. This is caused by increased temperature while the amount of light is low, so that's too weak. On below on the right, we have a vegetative, so it is the temperature and it's heavy angle. So we try to keep that balance all the way to the crop, the balance of the any stage and for any crop. It's the average temperature and, and the radiation. There's five aspects that are control factors for plants in, within plant empowerment. Relative humidity, PAR, CO2, and temperature. 
the VP VPD is an important instrument to prevent the plant stress circulation around the plant to keep evaporation and plant activity. Screens let us save energy, give good energy to the plants. And the average temperature versus the radiation, that's the RTR, that gives us, gives us the balance for the stage and for the plants. So these are the basic principles of plant empowerment. Now we can see a little what happens in the strawberries, the challenges that we have in indoor strawberry growing. Early environmental conditions are critical. It for illness and have a direct influence on production. The powdery mildew is one of the biggest challenges we have with strawberries. And since we have a relative high humidity environment, it is very critical. So that the environment can have a direct impact on, on all, the, all those illness and all the conditions. So we have to keep it controlled. There's also another aspect that for good strawberry growing, we need to change conditions from day to night. So if there's an extreme, night, maybe a little bit lower, colder, day higher, and that those changes, make, uh, let's say, can give us some challenges, big challenges in the operation and growing rate. The other challenge is light. Light has a direct effect on the growing of strawberries. We think it can be between 40 to 50% on the yield. Uh, so we have to be very, very accurate and keen on the control of light. Uh, the more the light, well, we know we, we're going to apply those principles. We'll talk about that here. The better we, we have to control the temperature to have that average within that same scope. It appears that the use of blue light is very interesting to have good results. It's considered by different research projects and papers that blue light can produce a better yield and a uh, better quality of strawberry. Uh, uh, an ideal condition could be a DLI of 1.5 to 70.3 moles, uh, the par of 350 uh, micromoles on 16 hours of daylight. The last uh, but not the least in the problems and challenges is water. We, Don and Hazam talked a lot about irrigation. That's critical for strawberries. They have to have a uh, very sensible to pH NEC and have to be within a EC of 1.2 and uh, uh, say a pH of 5.5 to 6.5. So now there's the opportunity to apply those principles to grow strawberries with a data-driven growing uh, focus. That's, that's now the steps that we can take. There's a lot of space there in the market to do this. We have to start with the let's strategy based on evaporation energy. That that is let's say one of our first uh, uh, steps to go. There can be multiple sources like lighting, radiation, heating, and air movement. If we know that the contribution um, each energy source to the evaporation, we can then up add up. total sum of evaporation energy, fine-tune our strategy based on that energy. Second opportunity, we can use tools actually to measure the VPD that, that's with, with commercial sensors, that's possible now. Uh, we can put the plant stress to avoid energy and water dis disbalance by VPD. If the plant is below the greenhouse temperature, this indicates an active crop. If the plant temperature is above the greenhouse temperature under high radiation, this might indicate stress. If the VPD is too high, depending on the crop, a good VPD range could be between 0 0.3 and 1.5 kilopascals. That's uh, an open range where we could have a good yield and good quality. Now, uh, the last also a tool, but very important application and implementation of plant empowerment is the RTR is the average temperature and the light. It most, most growers adjust temperature to the plant development afterwards. If the plant gets too strong, the temperature is increased. And if the plant gets too weak, the temperature is decreased. If this is done on a daily basis, the plant is out of balance. But if this is done on an average basis, the plant is in balance. 
increase the production of assimilates by optimizing the photosynthesis. This can be accomplished when the average 24 hour temperature and the amount of parsum are in fixed proportion. You can keep the balanced plant in all stages and crops. This applies to any plants. Production of assimilates depends on the total of parlight energy equals accumulated light. Consumption of, consumption of assimilates depends on the average temperature. How does the future look? That, that is a little bit our vision. Uh, first, we start with a unique dashboard. That's uh, uh, what we think it's gonna be. Every, all the sources of information will be connected and integrated to one dashboard that will generate data. With those facts, you will be able to take decisions. As we heard in the past conference, it's also valuable data. It's not all the data. We have to decide which data, applying those principles, and with that data, uh, take good decisions. Efficient, less resource, more production, more profit. How does this process work? From our perspective, it has three phases. The first one is the transfer of knowledge. It's all about training. It's just transferring what those principles, how can we apply them, what will be those principles within our operation, define the bandwidth, the objectives, because every grower, every can have a different objective. The second phase is learning by doing. Once we've learned, then we apply and we start continue learning, actually, we implement, we try, we test, we digitalize our crop, and we know in which direction we have to go. And the third step is the implementation and integration. There's where we are having really data-driven growing. And we can even talk about doing autonomous operation because we have the, tra the knowledge transfer tested, we've implemented, and now we're, we are able to operate. It's the process. This process can take, it's the time depends on different growth possibilities, data available, but it could take one, three years maybe on average. So the conclusions, there's a lot of room, strawberry growing, indoor growing market to improve. There's data driven growing gives us new perspective uh, related to this process to generate more profits, less use of resources, all focused on the plant needs. Uh, it's controlling the risk, minimizing the risk, taking decisions based on facts, uh, experiences very important because that takes us to a certain level, but now we have to go to the next level and take decisions based on data. And it gives the ability to growers to expand, to grow, to be scalable, to have more area to operate, to have more crops to control with this tool. So that, that also is very, very interesting for the future. Thank you very much. Here's a list of references if you want this to be shared, but we you can just write an email and I'll send you the list so there's some interesting information to, to look into. Thank you to all the uh, who shared those references with me as G Current and others. Thank you very much. Now we can pass the questions. Thanks very much, Luis. A very informative presentation. Um, Thank so you. We do have a, a question here for you from uh, Yun. Uh, Yun asks, uh, could you please uh, explain the possible mechanism involved in the beneficial use of blue light? So specifically about uh, your comment about uh, blue lights and, and strawberry uh, production. Yeah, thank you, Fed. This is specifically stated in a research paper. I, I can share that, no problem. So, well, I will go, it's not our specific research, so I won't talk for somebody else, but we can share that information, no problem. Great. Um, so we do have uh, some time here if uh, people have uh, some more questions. Uh, I do have uh, a couple of questions of my own. Um, yeah. If, um, so you're talking about strawberry production in, in greenhouses, uh, but also uh, indoors. Um, could you uh, expand a little bit about the uh, different needs of, uh, of strawberry plants in, in greenhouses versus uh, indoors like uh, vertical farm production? 
Yeah, the, that's, thank you for that question. I, I think so there's a little bit, the big change of those two scenarios is light. One is artificial light, the other one we, we use the sunlight, sunlight so that, that gives us uh, another perspective. Uh, uh, essentially, the, if, let's say that blue light, uh, LED blue lights, uh, uh, short, long wave is, is so effective as, as it's, let's say, stated, uh, then we can maybe make even, even be more efficient than the greenhouse in, in a certain way. But um, the light is the big difference. Let's say the environmental conditions for sure are controlled in both scenarios. Uh, it's in some, some indoor solution, it's very much controlled. Uh, there's a couple of unique solutions that where you can control uh, with uh, at, at, a, at a level based uh, control in a rack and a multi-layer system, vertical system. That, that is very, very interesting for strawberries. Uh, but in a general perspective, both are controlled. The big difference between two scenarios is the light, uh, sunlight and artificial light. Mm, you, if you use the, let's say, uh, that good uh, artificial light, you could achieve better yields and quality in the indoor. Yeah. Uh, and another uh, question that I'm, uh, I guess, sometimes from uh, vertical uh, farm growers uh, versus greenhouse growers is, um, uh, do, do you find some varieties work better uh, in, in greenhouses versus, versus uh, indoor production? No, that's, that's a good question. And, oh, I don't have that answer because that's a, a, a very confidential, let's say, information from, from growers that they're not willing to, all of them to share. Um, I think so, as I said, there's a lot of space in the market to get more information and that, that, that information is available for, for the public. And in strawberries, I found in, in this process that it, it was quite challenging to get uh, that specific information related, for example, to varieties that, that actually was what's interesting. In those research papers, those that I, I can share, there is a specific variety uh, within the, the process. So that's, that's one, let's say, option. But uh, I still have a big question mark there. I think so there's a lot of things to discover. Great, so that uh, answers Divya's question as well. Uh, it's good to know we were both thinking the same thing. <laughs> I, asked yeah. that question I asked that question before I even uh, read the, uh, the chat question. So that's, uh, that's yeah, yeah. So we answered yeah. that one. Uh, another one just came in uh, from a, an anonymous source. Uh, yeah. How does the system uh, deal with the variability between single plants, uh, like the temperature measured uh, by the mm -hmm. IR camera? So I guess he's, uh, this person is talking about uh, the variability between uh, plant to plant uh, variability and how the camera deals uh, with the, that kind of uh, variability uh, in the population. Yeah, uh, I'm going to give a uh, first answer and maybe we're going to invite Ton Van Dyck of Let's Grow to add something to that if I'm, I, I miss it. I think so. Uh, the IR camera gives us an average. That's an horizontal view of the crop of the, of the plants, let's say. Uh, we can add a thermal view camera that will give us a vertical view. So we will we'll see more specifically independent lectures of specific plants, leaves, stem, uh, luckily not roots, but at least those two, two big um, portions of the plant. And with those both, both tools, then we can, let's say, have uh, an accurate VPD. That, that is a, a, a way of seeing it. Um, and, and actually we've seen both, uh, having both data. Tom, do you wanna add something to that? Yeah, I can add something to that, uh, Luis. If it's about uh, uh, plant temperature, um, and you know, it, it sounds a little bit uh, getting a little bit annoying, but then we come back to the principles of plant empowerment, where you put plant central, and uh, you need to measure more. And uh, you mentioned the thermal camera, indeed. Um, as you say, the biggest difference is that the thermal camera has 4,800 pixels that, that can measure for each pixel is a temperature measurement. And that way you have not only in data, but also in vision, you see temperature differences between plants, but also within the plant, because we all know that a fruit 
that contains water is a different temperature and reacts differently on conditions, lightning, uh, sun, uh, radiation, uh, uh, temperature, than a leaf that is thin. So uh, you need to know that information to optimize your conditions. Uh, that's a way to keep your plant in balance. Through an infrared camera, you get a general approach of what's going on in your greenhouse. But the combination of those two can really be an added value, definitely. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot for the, uh, for the input. Uh, the next question is about uh, pollination. Um, so the, uh, the pollination in vertical farms versus uh, greenhouses. And it's uh, moved in as asking, yeah. uh, probably needs to be done uh, manually uh, if, if you're not using uh, bumblebees in, in vertical farms or other forms of uh, insect pollination. Uh, I I well, no, yeah, known uh, it, it, for sure manual could, manual could be done, but uh, I think it, in vertical farming, they still do the traditional bumblebees uh, pollination procedures or plants. And they, you can, let's say, liberate bumblebees in a vertical farm setup it's 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 the same let's say uh, operation and, and process that will have greenhouse and even in nature so so yes it can be done manually or by bumblebees but there's no restrictions it, it it depends a little bit on the layer of the vertical farm and that's why uh, the in vertical farming uh, there's a lot of options out there but i think so there's not so many that really have uh, taken an all of these aspects based on the plan. There's some that really are good and all that take into account the possibility of doing pollination by, by bumblebees, yeah. Great, so that's, uh, that's it for the, uh, the audience uh, questions.